yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see it. Looks like we're up and running. We're good to go. Uh, let's see if we have... John, can you hear us? Yes, sir. How about you, Court? Are you, uh, can you hear us okay? Actually, quite well. Thank you. All right. Very good. Um, so we are going to have a special meeting of the Board of Commissioners here in Curry County. And um, Commissioner uh, Boyce is uh, attending another uh, event out of town and joining us by by phone. And Commissioner Herzog is ill today, and he is joining us by phone as well. So we have a quorum. And we'll start this special meeting by a Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. to the United, United States, States, States of America. United States to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and thank you everyone for coming today. I'm joined here at my left by County Council Ted Fitzgerald, and to my right, John Jesuits, also known as JJ. Any public comments today? All right, I see no public comments, so we'll proceed with the um, consent agenda. There is none, so now the action discussion. Um, this is a time-sensitive issue, which is why we're having the meeting today. We have to make a decision on this before the 31st, I believe. So, Monica, do you want to stand up and uh, present the information? All right, good morning. Uh, Monica Ward, Curry County Emergency Management. And um, the item is for the community risk reduction. Uh, it's a wildfire grant that we can apply for as a county for up to half a million dollars. Uh, timeline really wasn't short, but due to the ongoing emergencies in the county, uh, it was definitely uh, something that we had to catch up on. So I met with the Fire Defense Board because there was an option for the county to apply and the districts. Instead of the districts applying individually to duplicate the work, they've asked that the county just apply and we capture all the projects in our application. So there are four uh, priorities with the grant application that we would like to submit. The first is the Are You Ready books that we have published already, but we're going to do a wildfire edition to focus on just sensible space and the types of plants and just things that the homeowners can do for themselves to protect themselves against wildfire. Uh, the second would be to purchase items and help support the preparedness expos that we will be conducting going forward. Third is to update all of the signage, especially out in the right of ways for first responders. Currently those signs are rather small, so at night they are having difficulty reading the numbers and uh, the updated signage will be larger so that they can read it at a distance. And fourth will be to build and implement a defensible space program, which will include hiring contractors to go out and clear the defensible space for individual homeowners and around critical infrastructure within the county. All right, so half million dollar grant. That's pretty, uh, pretty good to hear. So um, any, any discussion, uh, Court, we'll start with you first. No, Vice Chair, I'm just very happy uh, that this got done today and that we're intending to visit. Appreciate everyone's effort very much. And Chair Herzog, any, any discussion from you? The only discussion I would have, Brad, is uh, for Monica, when you start talking about signage, the hot button in Curry County, um, in the in the out in the hindered lands there. So um, I don't want to get into a, a situation like we did years ago with Marilyn Schaefer and everybody uh, having to change their address. And I realize it's not a change of address; it's more of a uh, you 
So everybody in the county right now has a five-digit number on a green sign with white letters, white numbers. So, um, and the kicker has always been and in the delivery business forever is having those people put those, you know, where you can see them. Um, and but there's a lot of people who don't like to be seen. So. Um, does that make any sense? It, it does for me. Um, and so the plan is to just replace the signs already in the right of way. Uh, the signs that um, the planning department already issues, we're just simply replacing those. Homeowner doesn't have to do anything. But we will also order a second sign that's smaller for their homes. It'll be their option on whether they want to put it there. But right now, I believe everyone does have a sign in the right of way for their address. It's just, I mean, when we went on the back roads, some of them you can't even find because they're covered with foliage and they're really small. So it's creating a life safety issue for the fact that first responders cannot actually find these homes. And uh, like, if you have a longer driveway, it's gonna be at the end of your driveway on the main road. So that the first responders just know what addresses are down that road. And what if you have a uh, we are getting those quoted right now. Um, I do not remember the dimensions off the top of my head because we are just trying to get quotes so that we know how much of the grant is set aside for the signage alone. And Monica, my understanding is um, if you don't want one, you don't have to get one. If you do want one, um, it will be a replacement sign. and. The, the uh, type of sign will be more visible to a first responder under adverse conditions, correct? Correct. Right now, the signs are small enough that when the numbers reflect, it's just a blurred white line. And they're having to slow down to try to figure out which address they're actually at, which is just delaying their response time. Right. And having been in that position and responding to those types of calls, I can tell you that that's a that's a critical piece of information. So I would encourage uh, people to reach out and get one. If they don't have one, can they get one, Monica? Correct. If they should have been provided one when they were given an address by the planning department. Okay. Um, all the green signs that we see in the right of way, uh, those were provided by the planning department, and those are the priority to upgrade okay. with this grant. And the, the signage, it's completely dependent on whether the homeowner wants it. Correct. Perfect. <laughs> uh, Mr. Barnes? Is there any cost share? No, no cost share. Uh, any further uh, discussion, Commissioner Herzog? No, sir. I was ready to make a motion then. When you're ready. Uh, Mr. Mr. Boyce? No, I'll just wait for the motion. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'll... All right. I'll entertain a motion then. I move that we. And I'll second that motion. And, and, and I'll second that motion. Uh, all in favor, say yes. Yes. And yes. So three yeses. Motion passes. And there is no executive session. Um, so. I just have a very, if I may, Vice Chair, I just have a very brief update. Please go ahead, Mr. Boyce. Yeah, just uh, I'm at the uh, Coos Prairie Housing Summit, uh, the South Coast, uh, Coos Bay, North Mandeville Convention Center. We've got, and I'm, on, and I'm kind of honored to MC. Uh, we've got about 115 people here. Chair one, uh, developer all the way from Idaho, so, so we had a 30 minute video. It couldn't have been uh, done any better. And so we're moving forward in our housing uh, progression efforts. Thank you for that time. Good, look forward to hearing the update. If there's no further comments, then um, we all agree we can adjourn. Yes. All right, meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much, and I hope you feel better, John.